Hey guys, welcome back to Paracord Planet. Today we're going to be making a Stone Age Paracord bracelet, because they totally had Paracord back then. If you've got a better name for this, definitely let us know in the comments. For this project, you're going to need some 550 cord and also some 95 cord. This is in color cream, and we've got chocolate brown. You'll need about 7 feet of each, but I've got 10 feet of each here, so you can see how much I cut off at the end. You'll also need a binder clip to hold things in place, and a Type 1 FID. You don't necessarily need this, it will make it easier, but I like to use one on video so that you can tell exactly where I'm weaving the cord through. So with all that out of the way, let's dive in. Okay, so to start out, just like in a lot of bracelets, we'll line up the two ends and find the middle. It's going to be a knot and loop closure on this bracelet. So we'll start with the loop on this end, and you just want to leave a loop big enough to fit a diamond knot through. So that's going to be, you know, about a half inch and then we'll start on our first knot. We'll be making it a little bit further in and then adjusting it down after we make it. So just leave some cord, flip it so that your loop is on the bottom, and then a cord off to each side. And we'll start by just crossing them over each other and making an overhand knot. If you want the rest of the directions to make sense, you want that left cord to be going underneath Otherwise, you'll have to do a mirror image of everything. So once you have that knot done, take that right side cord that's coming out on top and make kind of an ear going off to that side. And with this other one, we'll make an ear underneath. So they're just crossing over in the middle like that. And then each one of those we want to wrap around so this left ear is coming behind. We're gonna wrap it across the front and then it's gonna go through that loop. So across, pull all the slack through that loop. Like that. Same thing on the other side. This cord here is going over the top. So we're gonna wrap it around the back and up through the right ear. Once that's done, it should look about like this starting to look like a little bit of a tangled mess, but you just kind of want to keep this part in your hands so that you don't let it slip too much. And then the last step is going to be taking this right side cord and bringing it up through that overhand knot on the top. So you just want to split it open. I'll change views here. So on the top, we have that overhand knot and we want to be coming up right through the middle of it. So this right side cord is going to go over the top and through. And this cord is going to be coming around the back and up through. And then you should have your loop coming out one end and your two strands coming out the other end. And you can just gently pull on both ends to tighten that down. And that completed knot is called a jewel knot. We've actually featured this in a video before, but we're changing it up a little bit with this one. You want to tighten it down so that it's looking about the same on both sides. You should have kind of an X pattern, like this side, on this side as well. You don't have to tighten it down all the way because we want to adjust it so that it's down towards this end. So you'll just need to follow each cord through, pull out the slack, and out the other end. Once you have it all tightened down, it should look about like that. Just make sure that after you pull everything tight, you still only have about a half inch loop on that end for our diamond knot later. Moving on, we'll add the 95 cord in. And you just need an end for this one. We're going to be doing a fishtail weave with a single strand. So just bring that cord in and leave a little bit of a tail going down through the middle. You guys probably know the fishtail, but just bring it up through the middle around one side, up to the other side, and just keep on repeating that pattern. So just want to do a few and then tighten down as you go. So slide it up to the top. We'll make about 10 stripes on each side.
Once you've completed your 10 stripes, just bring that cord out of the way and clamp it with your binder clip. Now we can start on our second jewel knot and that'll be tied the same way, except we'll add one step when we're tightening it down. So the only added step this time around is that before you tighten down the knot, we're gonna take that end of the brown cord and thread it right through the middle. And eventually we're gonna tighten that down all the way, but I still have it clamped back in my binder clip here. So we'll tighten that down. You might wanna make sure that the brown cord is towards the bottom of the knot so that when you tighten it down all the way, you don't see any brown poking through. I find that it works best to tighten the knot down just about all the way before adjusting it to where we want it to be. So I'll do just that. Just taking one cord at a time and pulling it all the way down. You might need to take your binder clip off at this point. Once that knot is tightened down to where it needs to be, and the extra slack from the brown cord is pulled through, we can start with the fishtail again. And we'll just keep with that pattern of 10 stripes of the fishtail, followed by another jewel knot. We'll just keep on repeating that pattern until our bracelet is our desired length. All right, so we managed to fit in five repeats of the pattern, and that's about the right size for my wrist. I think my wrist is about seven inches. So now we're just gonna end it off with a diamond knot instead of another jewel knot. The diamond knot's just a little bit wider, so it's not gonna slip out of that loop. So we'll make it here really quick, but we do have some other videos that cover this as well. So there's the diamond knot all tightened down and I've gone ahead and threaded that brown cord through the middle of that knot as well. It actually does help if you have just a little bit of a gap on this one for that loop to come around and hook on. Just a little bit narrower so it keeps it more secure. We'll clip those ends as well as this first one that we started with and finish it up. And there is our Stone Age bracelet or whatever you guys want to name this. I think this turned out pretty well. Pretty unique bracelet. You could do this with other colors and kind of give it a different theme, but I thought it was fun to switch up the cord types and the knot types, give it some nice contrast. So in the end, we had about six feet of 550 left over and five feet of 95 left over. So with a little bit of extra left on to tie the knots, we ended up using about six feet of each. So again, comment below with what you think this one should be named. For now, it's gonna be called the Stone Age Bracelet. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, we'll put links in the description to where you can find the supplies. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.